Now, not all of us have a show-stopping garden in the backyard. It might be zero desire, but for most of us, it's just time, you know? We're busy doing work. When you've got a small space to work with, it's super important to find out from the homeowner what they really want. So, Jack, what was your uh, idea when you started to take out the old lawn? Well, yeah, I didn't have much luck with the lawn. There's just uh, a lot of shady spots, so um, I was thinking maybe some decking or something out here, just something to, you know, because there's not much space inside, so having a bit of living space out in the garden would be great. So I'm thinking about putting in three modular landings with some built-in furniture so Jack and the family will have loads of space. And then as far as the garden goes, sort of plants that give you contrast, like lots of strappy plants, and then next to it, something that's really nice and neat and a ball, like yep. highly detailed. But mate, you're a chef. Your talents are wasted out here. Yep. I can do this. I've got help. Done. Normally, I go nice, dark colours. I've probably mentioned black and domino a hundred times on Better Homes. But this brick wall, we're going to paint white, so it really draws your eye. But we are going to put a couple of rusty screens on it to soften it. Now, I've got a really thick matte roller on there because the brickwork's got lots of texture. Put a heap of paint on the roller, go over it slowly, and concentrate on all the little nooks and crannies. This is one of the three frames. Now, if you can build a sand pit, which is just the four sides on the outside for the kids, you can build the frame for this deck. It's exactly that. Four sides and then inlaid with four 50 mil centres. All of this is sitting on the ground. So it's important that this is treated pine H4. That means you can go in contact with the earth. We're going to clad it with a beautiful spotted gum decking. So from top, it's going to look like the builders have been in, but the frame underneath is as simple as putting A into B into C. Have a look down that line. Can you see down that line how straight that decking board is? Because timber's a natural product, they tend to bend and cup a little bit. But that one, well, I reckon on next week's show, I can make a pool cue out of it. But I'm going to start with it because it's nice and straight, which means if I measure off that the whole way across, all the other boards will be straight. And it means when I'm finished, everything will be straight. When you're building a deck, you need a couple of things to make it as easy as possible because it's very repetitive. For starters, this little drill has a head on it, so when it goes in, it stops at the right height, but it also gives you the large head that hides the head of this flush with the timber. Secondly, if you can afford two drills, it's great because it means you keep going without changing your bits all the time. All these little yellow markers are spaces at four mil. It means I can lay the whole deck out, screw off about every sixth or seven one, and keep going, getting the whole deck down before I go back and screw them in a nice straight line, because I've either used a string line or a chalk line to mark the center of this treated pine that I'm screwing into. When it comes to getting a nice straight edge on the ends of your deck, it's a lot easier to mark it out with a pencil, nice and sharp, and then cut the excess off, rather than trying to butt them all up straight. Coming up, we really dress up the deck and turn this empty backyard into a full garden. This job's a little bit repetitive. I think I need some music to get me through. Yeah. just not working. I need this sound amplified somewhere where I can sit this phone in and make it really loud. And I'm not talking about just a plastic cup. I mean something made out of timber that you can use forever. To make the amplifier, I'm just using some 7mm ply. And the look I'm going for is like the old school stadium speakers. So it's narrow at one end and then it flares out at the front. Next step is to mark it out. Once the pieces are cut out, I'm just giving the edges a really good sand. 
Now that everything is cut, a good little tip is not to throw away your offcuts because this box is made using compound angles, which means it's bending in both directions. So we've got the jigsaw that we've cut that angle on. For the other angle, we get our scrap bit. We're gonna sit it on the face of a timber with our grab clamps to hold it in place. And you can see that then that bends the timber the opposite way. Because I'm using small brads, it's a good idea to start the nails before you glue this box together. But another tip is you want to make sure that you get the centre of the plywood. So use the scrap bit as a guide. That way, you get it right every time. The exciting part. You can see what the box looks like. So. There you go, it's like an old retro speaker. The way it works is our phone's gonna sit in the back here and then the sound's gonna blast out from the front. But obviously most phones have speakers down the bottom. So if we just sat it down here, well, it's not gonna work very well. So I need to add in a couple of feet to raise the phone that way. We'll just sit in here and we'll have heaps of sound. We'll be rocking away in no time. Don't worry about that. Oh, sorry. Before I seal this box up, I'm just filling up the uh, nail holes with some oak putty, which blends in perfect with our plywood. Now the putty's dry, I'm just giving the box a good sand, and also I'm adding a stand underneath, so it gives our amplifier a nice angle. Now you might be thinking, how's the phone gonna sit back here without falling out? Well, I do have a back to go on, but the trick is here to leave it off because we're gonna lacquer it first, that way we can get into all the nooks and crannies, and then we stick it on at the end. How good has this turned out? So I've put the back on, I've given it a second coat, and I think it looks fantastic. Now, sealing it is actually the most important step because it gives the music a hard surface to bounce off. That way, it's nice and loud, just the way I like it. There's only one thing left to do, that's to try it out. most people's bedrooms is there never seems to be enough space, especially if you share with another person. Well, I've got some really good ideas, probably ways you've never thought of to add more storage. And while we're at it, let's add some style and softness to make this a beautiful haven you'll love to come home to. We all know about flat pack cabinets. Basically, that's what your kitchen is made from. You've got the wider ones as base cabinets and the narrower ones up top. Well, there's no reason why you can't use flat pack cabinets in the bedroom as well. By installing flat pack cabinets from wall to wall in here above the bed, it means we can totally max out the storage in this space. Now, we're making sure that they're high enough to go well above the bed. Got that muscles? He doesn't use cheating a little bit. He's used this long length of timber just to kind of take some of the weight while we install these. Timber <laughs> <Kevin> loves me. <laughs> just because we're installing kitchen cabinets in the bedroom doesn't mean to say it needs to look like a kitchen. I want to jazz up the doors to give it the appearance of built-in furniture wall to wall. I'm using thin MDF. This is affordable, you can buy it off the shelf from Bunnings and you just need to draw up your shape on the door just with this curve at the top with a straight side and I'll do a smaller one on the other side so I get a bit of a reflection going on. Safety gear always a must. Then with this side, we can actually flip it over and just bring it in 100. So there is a slight match there on both sides and just down 
To stick these panels down, we need to use PVA glue. If you're always getting messy with PVA glue, here's a really great tip. Use a paint roller. So just get it on evenly all over and stick the two pieces together. So I'm using aqua enamel in two different shades, grey and white. I want to keep this room soft and calm, so now I'm just doing the white over this section so I'll have a two-tone effect. tight budget and you actually need some more bedroom storage, you really can't go past online second-hand furniture. I mean, they look pretty good natural, but I think in our room we want to go for that fresh, bright look, so I'm going to hit them with the white spray paint. For the rattan drawer fronts, the spray paint is ideal. It just means it won't clog in the weave. Now, for the body of the cabinet, all it really needs is a very light sand. It's best to just go on with a stain blocker undercoat. That stops this brown from rising through. And then I can go over it with a normal aqua enamel using a roller. These cabinets up top, well, they're not going to be accessed all that often. So we've added these catches just to keep that neat, clean, seamless line. For the lower cabinets, we've chosen to open them upwards and the great thing about that is they get held in place with these cabinet stays so you can put in what you need to and when you're done, it just closes down. Overall, this has made such an incredible style statement to this room, plenty of storage and the best part, it hasn't taken up any floor space at all. We've come such a long way already. This little bedroom that was filled with piles of junk and mess has magically been transformed, mainly thanks to these overhead cabinets. They've absorbed so much clutter. Well, there's still a long way to go, so if you pop back a little later in the show, I'll give you some of my favourite bed styling tips. Broken, you're looking after your little one, yeah. so there's not much time for this, is there? No, definitely not. I'm over at Jack's house and we're having a rethink of his backyard. With a busy life, he's got no time to spend on the garden. So we're taking a different approach using decking and garden beds. Jack, we're about halfway, so what do you think? Oh, it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, the option of a lawn, really, with the shade that you've got around here... Yeah. ..and the amount of work you'd have to put in, there's kind of no chance. But this, yeah. the decks look good. We've covered them with plastic, so while we bring the soil and the plants in, we're not going to ruin it. Yeah. But uh, I'd say we're about halfway, which would suggest to me it's about lunchtime, brother. Hold your horses, mate. Oh, I can't wait. I eat like a horse, too. Now, as far as my levels go, I've raised the garden beds up a little bit. It's all the soil that's come out from underneath the three decks, plus we're adding some mulch and compost. It's like cow manure. This is a very sandy soil here, so I don't have to worry about drainage underneath my three decks. But if you're on heavy clay, Maybe the decks have to sit on top and the garden bed is a step down, just so you don't have to worry about drainage. Don't worry about the treated pine being in contact with the soil. It's H4, it can go underground. It's the decking here that you don't want to be touching the soil. Now, you've got to agree, the white painted wall looks a lot better than the old brick, but at the moment it's working like a massive reflector. It's highlighting my eyes, but it's making them squint at the same time. So, to soften it, we've got these two store-bought down at Bunnings Rusty Screens. They're about $90 each. Now, these guys are water houses. They're a screening plant. They're a lily-pilly, but they're larger than what we normally plant. Now, you might think, well, why am I putting such a big plant in a small courtyard? Well, from the back of the house, a negative is that you can see that block of units. These guys will get to four or five metres. You can cut them back and keep them to a screen or a hedge so they don't take over the backyard. Block that out, give you more privacy and turn this into a really intimate space. Here we go, boys. Oh, stop it. Now, this garden bed's probably broken up into about four different zones, but we're going to tie things in together. Now, if you have a look at the base of this one, you'll get the gist of it. At the front, 
little potostrum called hole in one. Now they're a great little plant for a busy family because they keep that ball shape. If you want to put them into a hedge, you can plant them about 50 centimetres apart, give them a haircut a couple of times a year and it works really well. But if you plant them just a little bit further apart than that, they can just fill that shape in. I guarantee you won't have to touch them for a couple of years. Behind them, we've got a contrasting foliage because we've got the dark and the lime green there of Raphaelimpsis oriental pearl. We've got a few grasses to fill in the places and some lilies. And then we've got a magnolia teddy bear. The reason why I've gone for them is because there's one next door and it's doing spectacular. So if it's doing well there, chances are it's going to do well here. That's a great way to pick your plants. Now, even with the screens up, the white wall is very eye-catching to a negative on a hot summer's day. So to soften it and get a hedge sort of through here at waist height, I'm planting some more magnolias. Now, unlike the little gems, the teddy bears, and even the deciduous ones, this one's called Cinderella. If you give it a haircut, it stays nice and compact, plus it flowers its head off. I've seen these where there's been that many flowers, you can hardly see the foliage. And as far as perfume, well, I reckon it's right up there with jasmine. Lots of people are of the belief that you don't water in the middle of the day because you're going to burn the leaves of the plants. Now, there's a chance that'll happen, but it's far more important that these plants get a bit of moisture now, and I can worry about a few burnt leaves later. These outdoor seats also double the storage. Stop on the line. I don't need anyone to tell me I'm going like crazy. Another look and I'm feeling helpless. I'm going like crazy. Mate, what do you think? Mate, this is fantastic. It really is. I reckon it's one of the best uses of a small space that we've ever done on the show. And without compromise, it is a very usable space. Yeah. Think about what you had here before and yeah. how much luck you'd had in the garden. Yeah, yeah. Not much. We've improved the soil, we've planted tougher plants. You are going to enjoy relaxing in this space rather than having to worry about and work on the plants. So what's your favourite part of the garden? Mate, I just think the fact that we'll be able to use it more and uh, my daughter can dance around on these little platforms. Well, this could be a bit of a boardwalk. She might end up in a supermodel. Potentially, yeah, that's the plan. Thanks very much for your help. Thanks for feeding me. But, mate, that doesn't count as chefing. I could have made that. You probably could have too. So, Joe, I put these guys to sleep earlier. Okay. And chopped them up. So, how would you put them to sleep? Just cover them in ice. Okay. They get all sleepy. Yep. Um, and then you can handle them and present them for cooking. Okay, great. So, all that work has been done. Yeah, thanks. See, that was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> and because these are so fresh, the trick is not to play with it too much. Yeah. A quick cook, a few spices, and let the crab shine through. Starting off, some black pepper here. Yeah. I've already crushed it up. Mm -hmm. And next in is some garlic. No peeling. We're on a beach <laughs> or an estuary. It's all about making it nice and easy. How beautiful is it, though? Yeah, it's fabulous here. It's gorgeous. Probably four cloves. Four cloves? Tonight. Or three large cloves, even. I was getting a bit carried away there. All right. So they're in. Yep. And we just, just pound them with mortar and pestle. Yeah. Where will I do that? Up here? Yep. Now, those papery skins, they're just fine. Leave them in. So, Joe, that's it. As you know, what cooking, it happens all pretty quickly. So yep. we're just adding a few other things, some extra virgin olive oil. I've got some lime leaves to yep. throw in at the end. Uh -huh. And I reckon we need some salt. So... You got some salt down here? No, I'm, I'm actually just going to use some fish sauce. Oh, perfect. Good splash of that. And maybe, Joe, even a splash of seawater or the water. Yeah, OK, great. Because that's quite salty as well. Why not use it? We've got it right here. <laughs> so do you want to get that now, though? Yeah, in case I'll go we... grab that. Yeah. Put those up there for you. Thanks. Ready. OK. Here's your salt in the water. Thank you. 
Um, what, Olive oil? Yep, if we can. I'm, I'm like your little sous chef. You just you wander around and I'll just grab whatever you need. In the bush kitchen. I don't think I've ever had a sous chef before. <laughs> a little bit of oil is going in there. And in with the garlic and pepper. So straight in with the crab and you can see it's changing colour. Yep, as it's cooking. Pretty instantly. So a splash of the water. A little touch of fish sauce. I'm guessing that that water's pretty darn salty. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then a few lime leaves. Oh, spiky! <laughs> and then we'll just pop the lid on and wait about a minute and we'll be eating. And I swear, if you can actually come and have the experience of crabbing for yourself, well, that takes it next level again. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be pinching yourself if you don't give it a go, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, I just couldn't help it. Um. And we are, we're done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now Straight where's George? There. We need George to test this, because I reckon he has tasted plenty of crab in his time. Hello. Hello. How are you going? Oh. oh my gosh. You like spicy food? I do. I oh, do. this is good. Well, it's just and pepper. It's not chilli as such, but we're hoping it's we can... It's got a little bit of bite to it. There we go. What Thank cooked? you. Thank you very much. Bit of garlic, bit of black pepper, some fresh lime, and a little bit of the, the water. Beautiful. And, uh... I get the... Oh! I ball! <laughs> <laughs> that is really nice. How and simple. And there's, there's a secondary taste coming in there that bites you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you just sit on it for a second and it just goes, ooh! <laughs> You're alive. Mm, it's limey, mm. peppery, and then there's a little bit of caramelised garlic in the background. I'm really glad that you use the salt water from here. It's the best way to cook the crabs. Earlier I tackled a cluttered, cramped bedroom and added some very non-traditional storage then dressing it up for a very original look. But I also promised some softness too. What I want to share with you now is how to dress a bed properly, starting from the base up. Now, in my opinion, you cannot go wrong with a mattress protector, which wraps fully over the mattress and tucks in underneath. Another great thing, it is completely machine washable. It's like a luxury hotel already. I'm using a wool quilt for this bed. It's really great if you suffer from allergies. Now, everyone has their own favourite way of putting on your doona cover. This is how I do it at home. Basically, I spread the quilt out on the bed and I turn the doona cover inside out. And I grab it with my hand. So that's one corner. Other corner with the other hand. Flip, flip, flip. And on goes the cover. It's exactly how it gets done at my place. It works every time. Now, if you want to make some artwork for the bedroom, it's easy enough to do. You don't have to spend a fortune. You could just frame up very simple little black and white pictures. That would work well. Or if you've got some scraps of paper like these lying around in your craft kit, you can just cut them out in little arch and soft organic shapes to suit. As you can see, there's no real skill to this. I'm just mixing and matching some shapes and circles, soft curves, just gluing them together in a couple of different textures. So just make a little collage, frame them up, and they're going to look absolutely perfect. So you don't have to be a Monet to get a little bit of personal art on the wall. And it's good too, because look, they tie in the colours well. By having these wall-mounted lights, got a little bit of bedside reading. I think that's really good because it leaves us all of this space nice and clear to dress afterwards. Now for the controversial part, how to dress the bed with pillows. Now my favourites would always be Euro pillows. I like to have them at the back. I think it gives you something nice and soft to lean against. If you do choose to have two bed pillows like this, I would go one firm and one quite soft because sometimes, you know, you just like to have a little bit of variety. With the scatter pillows, one pillow here, one with a slightly different texture on the side, one with a bit of velvet at the front. I reckon that's all you need. And honestly, it does depend on how well you get on with your partner, as I say, as to how much of all of this you want to embrace. So down on the bedside tables, we'll add this nice little selection of vases, coral. Some of your favourites would be perfect here. 
here's another great tip. If you're looking for the perfect bed throw, why not get another doona cover? You can actually lay it across the bottom of the bed. Great colour contrast and really nice texture. Thinking back to the way this room looked before, it was filled with clutter, bits and bobs, and basically stuff that didn't have a home. It looked pretty, pretty sad. Now look at it, you wouldn't even believe that this is the same room. We set out to achieve a space that was clean and most of all clutter free. And by choosing a monochromatic colour scheme, it means that this space is gender neutral, really important. Everybody is welcome here. Just like any kids, my girls get spoiled rotten by their aunts, uncles and grandparents. So the pressure is on when it comes to their birthday to stand out from the crowd. And as you can see, Ruth's here, she absolutely loves animals. And that's given me an idea to make her a toy that she'll remember. Most kids love ducks, they're cute little animals. And I know that Ruby would love to have a couple running around our backyard, but that isn't gonna happen because they're messy. But I have the next best thing, a toy wooden duck that Ruby can take on our walks with us. And the best thing is, you can whip it up in a weekend with offcuts that you might have laying around the house. The first job is to cut out the body of the duck. Now I'm gonna be freehanding this duck. Now the thickness of the timber needs to be at least 19 mil. That way we can get a handle in the back. If you don't have a piece that's that thick, you can laminate a couple of pieces of ply together. and then a couple of circles which will be its feet. And the easiest way to make a couple of circles is with a hole saw. And the best part about that is the drill bit gives us the exact centre of the circle, which is what we need to put our axle in later on. And then to finish our duck, I'll be cutting out a set of wings. Oh, back to our feet. With our centre hole, I need to drill this out into a 10mm hole. That way, I can put a 10mm dowel in. But I'm only going to be gluing one side. That way, I can get it through the body of the duck and then glue the other side on later. After some undercoat, we can get creative. Now, I've based this toy on an Indian runner duck, which is great because it's easy to paint. It's predominantly white with a few accents of yellow. Now it's all dry, it's time to stick the wings on. For that, I'm just using some PVA glue. Once it's on, I'll then go over it with another coat of paint. Now, ducks don't have round feet, so to fix that, I've just got this old rubber mat and I've cut duck-shaped feet out. I'm going to cut a slot into the wheel and glue it in like so. We're ready to start assembling this duck. Now, the idea is when we're not using it, we want it to stand upright by itself. So I'm going to position the feet as far forward to the belly as possible. That way, when you push on the handle, the duck starts waddling along. Now, for the hole, I'm using a spade bit. That way, when you start drilling and it's the same depth all the way around, you know that your drill is straight. And we want our duck to waddle freely, so I'm putting on some washers on each side, which are going to act as spacers. And the other thing that you want to remember is to make sure that you put the feet on opposite ends of each other. Otherwise, our duck will start looking like a kangaroo and start hopping. We're ready to put the handle on. For that, I've just got some more 10 mil dowel, but I put a draw knob on the end of it, so it's going to make it nice and comfortable to push along. I've got my 10mm drill bit, and the tip here is, obviously, we're going to go on an angle. You can see I've got the tape on the angle that I want to go, but you're going to start straight, and then as the drill's going, you lean back, just following the angle of your tape. Haha, <laughs> it's looking good, but there's only one problem. This duck can't see where it's going, but a Sharpie will fix that. 
And how cute does that look? <laughs> With two girls, I couldn't just make one, so I've modified it a bit and made Arabella a penguin. The possibilities are endless, really. So why not give it a try this weekend? Have I got a pass, girls? Do you like it? Is it good? I think I've passed. I think they're happy.